Hi, everybody, and welcome to Episode 3 of the 2023 edition of the Eye on the Eagles show. I'm Sports Information Director Tim Hackett, joined first by head football coach Derek Alexander. Welcome to the show, DA. Thank you. We are live at Tanner's at Redbridge. It is a rainy and dreary September the 11th. Thank you for joining us here on this late Monday morning. DA, you guys took the trip out to Wichita this weekend to face the Friends Falcons, and honestly, exactly the the premise that you and I talked about on the show last week ended up coming true. They're a team that runs extremely well. They score a lot of points, and unfortunately for us, that's what they did for the third straight game. Yeah, those guys are uh, very efficient in what they do, and uh, the the thing about them is they're very difficult to prepare for. Uh, there, there's nobody else in the league that runs that offense, and th- they're extremely good at what they do with it. Uh, so, I mean, if you're not – sound on defense i mean they'll do exactly what they did to us uh and it, which they've been doing to every team so far uh they, they they run for a lot of yards and they score a lot of points and that's i mean for me that's some consolation because like what you just said is it wasn't just a, an off an off day by your defense they've friends has done this now consistently for three straight games after they started to build this up a little bit last season you and i talked about it last week this is their coaching staff's philosophy. They were very good at it when they were the coaching staff at Bethel. Mm-hmm. Just kind of transported a few miles away and trying to replicate that and make it a little bit better. And so far here in year two, so good it seems. Yeah, and like I said, those those guys are, are very good at what they do. Um, defensively, they're, again, a little bit awkward. Yeah. Um, and we probably shot ourselves in the foot a lot in that game, uh, just not being efficient in what we were doing. Uh, incomplete passes, you know, a few mistakes here and there, uh, a lot of three and outs in the first half, which we couldn't we we couldn't afford to have. Uh, and those guys had zero three and outs. I mean, they they drove the ball on us every time they they had it, and, and they did not punt. So yeah. that, that's the thing. Uh, when you play a team like that, you have to be efficient on offense as well, which is what we did not do. So kind of helping both sides of the equation, right? You know your defense is going to, as people always say, they're going to be out there a lot. They're going to have to make a ton of tackles because they run it almost exclusively. So part of the onus is on the offense then to kind of spell them a little bit and keep them off the field for a little while? Yeah, I mean, it's our job on on offense to help our defense by giving those guys a break. And like I said, in the first half, I think out of the six drives that we had, four of them were three and out. Mm-hmm. So that's that's not very helpful to our defense. So, um, I mean, we put a couple drives together, um, which gave our guys a break, uh, put some points on the board, yeah. but ju- just not enough. Well, you mentioned before we went on that this is – the reality is that you have a young team on a lot of facets. There's a lot of new guys that are in featured positions mm-hmm. that haven't been there before. And that's not an excuse. It's just the reality of a new coaching staff. It's something that any team would have to deal with, and that's just something that you guys are working with, which I think is exciting to some extent. Oh, yeah. I mean, we, we've got some guys that we like. Uh, and obviously, you know, we, if we put those guys in the game, we trust them. Sure. And um, – you know, not having a lot of experience, those guys are getting that experience now. Um, so hopefully by the time we get to our divisional play, you know, we've we've got that experience that we need. We've we've been in some tough games. We we've you know, we've run a two minute drill. We've done things and had situations where, you know, hopefully we get enough experience with these guys to uh make a run at the end. And that's I mean to your point. Uh, this is all just stuff that a lot of these guys have never seen before in game action, whether with this team or at the college level, whatever the case might be. And now you've got another week to potentially gain some more experience so that you can transfer all of that knowledge and gain experience onto games that mean a little bit more in theory in the second half of the season once we hit October 14th. But before we get to that point, another preseason tough test on tap this weekend at the Z. Bethel, the team that Avila beat at the Z to clinch the KCAC championship and a spot in the NAI tournament at the end of last season. The Threshers are coming back into town here this weekend. Preseason ranked team. They suffered a a strange loss of their own against Ottawa this past weekend. We'll talk more about that in a second, but what do you know about the Threshers here in year two of their coaching staff? Uh, They'll they'll be a good team. Um, You know, they've been playing some good football. Uh, Again, like you said, they stumbled a little bit last week. Uh, You know, some unfortunate uh, things happened at the end of that game, uh, which helped Ottawa. Who, I mean, it was a close game to begin with. Um, but to, uh, to make a mistake at the end of the game, uh, I think they fumbled a, a snap or something like that and allowed Ottawa to get the ball back. But 
um, those guys were right there, you know, to win that game. So they'll be a tough team coming in here. Um, they're very disciplined. They got some good guys up front on offense. Um, defensively, they've been playing very well. So it'll be a tough test for us. I think it'll be a great quarterback matchup, just like we saw a season ago. It's kind of two similar styled quarterbacks, at least from what I've seen. Eli Williams for us versus DJ Sears for them. They kind of ran an, an interesting kind of hybrid with some of the vestiges of the previous coaching staff, which we just talked about, which is now at Friends, uh, kind of mixed into, I guess, a more modern style offense last year. I'm curious what the evolution of their team is going to look like now that they're a further year removed from that. I mean, it, it's got to be hard to kind of break out of that. I'm not going to say restraint because clearly it, it works if it works, but it's right. it's definitely a new philosophy. Yeah, I mean, anytime you get uh, – I mean, and those guys were running the option uh, a couple years ago, so they still have some of those players sure. – who are are they have that knowledge and they have that uh, uh, play where you know they can do some of those things they can still do some of those things within what they're trying to do become a more traditional offense but they still have that in their back pocket with the, with, which they could pull out at any time. Just pivoting a little bit, talking about a different level of football that I think we would be remiss if we didn't bring up the first week of the NFL season with yourself, former NFL wide receiver. You know, around here there are many football fans, many Kansas City Chiefs fans, folks that know you from your days as a player, I'm sure. But, you know, this is stuff that, you know, a lot of us have lived. We've been fans of the NFL for a long time. But this is something that you lived. And what what is it like for you now? It's not like you retired last year, obviously. But what is this time of year like for you as a former professional football player seeing that season get started back up again? And the thing is, I, I love football. So anytime football is on, I, I want to watch. I want to see what's going on. But particularly with the NFL, um, you know, a few teams I played for, you know, the Chiefs, you know, suffered a, a loss on Thursday. <laughs> but it was to my Lions. I was so going to say. <laughs> you know, it's kind of bittersweet both ways. Uh, but I uh, love watching football. I love being a part of it. I love, uh, you know, the ability to, you know, but now – when we're in season, it's kind of hard for me to catch a lot of games because we're we're still going on Sundays. Sure. Um, but we'll I'm I'm able to catch catch the late games and uh, you know all the prime time games, which you know I'm always interested in just just see how guys are playing, um, you know get ideas. You know <laughs> I'd like sure. to see what's going on or what's new out there that we can maybe implement. Um, but it's it's great being a part of the NFL uh, and, and having an opportunity to play in the NFL uh, just elevates you know what i want to do in football is just i mean i want our guys to feel like they're nfl guys just the way we operate the things that we do to try and help these guys become successful i realize like i said it's not like you were in the league 12 months ago yourself i understand that but you know i've talked with a number of guys at the college level who always find it uh weird to use one term when they go back the next fall after they finish playing and they wake up on a saturday and they don't have a game anymore what is that what's that like for you knowing knowing that you aren't playing on Sundays or maybe Monday <laughs> nights anymore I, it, not even nowadays that's uh, you know that's one of the reasons I actually got back I got into coaching uh, when I was playing I never thought I, w- I would be a coach I thought coaches you know spent way too much time in the office which I do <laughs> uh, but I mean at the end of the day I'm a competitor and you know not being able to go out on the field anymore when I retired it was, it was like now what am I going to do? Like I have to – I started going back to games, and that just got my juices flowing again. I'm like, there's got to be a way for me to get back into this game. And, and I found that through coaching. And, and that's what propelled me uh, to become a great coach. I, I wanted to get in and, uh, you know, see if I can help these guys. And also just being back on the field makes me feel like I'm part of the game, oh, which I am. You certainly are. <laughs> and we're glad to have you as part of our team not playing anymore but you've got the chance to lead a bunch of guys who are still playing i think that's an awesome thing you guys will have the the eagles and Derek alexander will have the chance to be back out on the field this saturday their second home game at the z 1 p.m kickoff against bethel preseason top 25 matchup admission is ten dollars per car and if you can't make it to the game you can always tune into the game live on the avila sports network with joe van amberg on the call it's 1 p.m this saturday avila against bethel coach alexander thanks for being here all right thanks appreciate it we'll be back with our next coach this is eye on the eagles
Welcome back to Eye on the Eagles. We're live at Tanners at Redbridge. Sports Information Director Tim Hackett now joined by head volleyball coach Marilyn Mozina. Welcome to the show, Coach Mo. Thanks, Tim. Welcome home. You guys had a lot of traveling to do this past week, and now you're back on the road this week for kind of a, a short week for you guys relative to the last few. You had a lot of stuff going on at the end of the week. Now you've got a match here at the beginning of the week, and right. that's it in terms of games on the schedule, which yeah. has to be a, a little bit of a unique feeling for you. Yeah, it is, um, but we need it right now. Um, honestly, we've been kind of go, 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 and Hope and I have been talking. We haven't really been able to have um, a practice other than light practices just because obviously day before a game we're trying to conserve as much energy as possible, especially when you play on a Thursday and then you have a Friday practice and then you've got two games on Saturday like what this last schedule was or you know the week before we played, oh gosh, Tuesday, yeah. Thursday, Friday, Saturday, yeah. right? And so – you know, with that, you just don't get a lot of practice time. Um, it's just short to the point, right, just more reps. And so we're really looking forward to this week. Obviously, yes, we start the week off with a match tomorrow. We're on the road, Peru State, back to Nebraska, which will be exciting. Um, and then, yeah, you know, we got a week of, of practice, which is what we need right now, kind of leading into conference play starting next Wednesday. So, you know, all of our preseason has been on the road. So we're really looking forward to next next Wednesday, hopefully, um, being able to rock a home match and, and get, a, get a good crowd out and rock and roll from there. So, so. Something we'll talk about with the soccer coaches coming up as well because they have actually the same exact uh, schedule set up, I guess, as yourself in that right. regard because they both played one match last week and then had this whole last weekend off before their first conference games this weekend, uh, coming up this week, I should say. Right. So I'm going to ask them both that same thing. They got some time off, whether it was planned or not. It doesn't necessarily matter. It's the reality of the situation. So after, let's let's talk Tuesday first. Now, Peru State on tap. Like you said, you yep. go back right back to the state of Nebraska and yep. a team we haven't played in volleyball very much recently, but that is a team that has played a lot of KCAC schools already yeah. this season. So uh, a fair bit on tape, I guess, at this point against teams that we are familiar with yeah. uh, coming out from the Bobcats so far this year. Yeah, so Peru State was actually my very first um, t uh, match I coached against when I started here at mm -hmm. Avila, um, and we got the win at the KCAC. Yeah, the fall fling. The fall fling. Yeah, yeah, I remember that, yeah. Yeah, so, um, so yeah, so it's been a – I mean, we didn't play them last year, so, yeah, we'll be back to it. Um, you know, they're in Nebraska, so they play a lot of GPAC schools. They play a lot of KCAC schools, so they just have a um, – a lot of competition that they're battling with and they're in the heart of America. Right. So I just think with the location of where they're at, the conference that they're in, you know, it's, it's a tough, solid team. Right. And switch is something we've talked about in the past couple of weeks is, you know, being very intentional with what we schedule. And so, you know, I was very intentional with our schedule, right. Um, with obviously knowing we're rebuilding a program. Um, we wanted to give ourselves not a PUD schedule. We really were, you know, going after those challenging matches. And so I expect a challenging match tomorrow. Um, and, you know, I honestly I haven't watched film on them yet. We haven't gotten film. I've looked at stats. I've been able to kind of see record and, and things like that and roster and whatnot. But I haven't watched any game like any game um, time film on them yet. So, we'll, you know, we'll do that here this afternoon. Um, and we'll see, see kind of where we're at, what, what the matchup will look like. And really just – Get back to it. I think so. I think it's really interesting that, you know, obviously there are only so many teams that anybody could play, right? But right. they have played a, a good number of KCAC schools mm -hmm. by now. Their record is 5-7. and seven. I was looking at this morning as of Monday, and, I mean, almost half of those games are – at least a third of those games are against our conference right. opponents. Like, they play Bethany, beat Bethany, and then turn around a couple of days later, play Bethany again and lost. So right. it's just kind of a weird – it's just how the sport goes sometimes, right? And right. I'm not sure who played in either of those matches. So maybe, you know, Bethany didn't have some players available one time. I don't know. But it's interesting just how that works. And for me, that means this is a good uh, measuring stick, I guess, for you yeah. guys because we're about to get into conference player bus right. where you're going to see all those schools. And right. you'll have a, a common opponent now after tomorrow night with all these schools too. Yeah, absolutely. 100%. Yeah, it'll be it'll be good. Again, gauging where we're at, where we're at. Um, in the conference where we're at nationally, all the things, right? Um, we are young. And so this year um, has brought a lot of growing pains with that, but also it's brought us some some um, high moments as well. And talking about the young team, this is, I mean, we talked a little bit about it in our first episode together, but this, your team is so young. You have almost exclusively freshmen 
a lot of sophomores in that mix as well. Right. And then only a couple of upperclassmen, including yeah. an upperclassmen, a couple of upperclassmen who are new to the team. So they aren't new to the sport, but they are new to you. So right. what was the process like building that team, finding all of these players, if you will, and yeah. then how has it been to see them all get here now as you are embarking on this first season with all of those pieces together? Right, yeah. Um, well, getting them here was, um, I think we talked about this, like, Recruiting is just a grind in general, and it's it's not easy. Yeah. It takes um, it takes a lot of time. It takes a lot of um, intentionality. Uh, you got to build relationships, right? Because I believe a lot of kids are looking for, yes, the right school, but they're also looking for the right coach, right? Who's who's going to be the right fit for them? And so, it is. It's a grind. And so, getting them here was. For some, it was easier, and for others, it was a little bit tougher, right? But, you know, something I talk a lot about in our in my recruiting process is, you know, we, we are building a program. We're rebuilding a program, and that was the vision that I painted, right? And so, you know, a lot of these girls wanted to sell out to that, right? They wanted to be a part of something bigger than themselves. And so with that, getting them here, that was kind of what we what we talked about, right? Now having them here, it's a whole nother ball game, right? Because – you know, they're trying to fit in um, to our system. They're trying to fit into our culture. Um, you know, girls in general, females, we just have <laughs> lots of personalities, right? Just um, all the things. And so I'd, we. <laughs> I'd say that's true for your team. Yeah. Right. And so we have 20 girls that, you know, everybody's trying to fit in best without changing who they are, right, as a person, but also growing and learning and saying, well, how how can I change mm-hmm. to best fit into this team, right? Because there's got to be a little bit of give and take, mm-hmm. right? And so it's it's been tough. Um, we've had a lot of what I call come to Jesus moments and, you know, a lot of good conversations. But right now that's kind of what we're in. We're kind of in that, in that hole, right? Um, if you look at our record, two and seven, Um, And it doesn't show the talent that we have, right? But we're trying to figure out how to play as a whole. And right now it's the trust. We just we're working on building the trust amongst our team. Um, And with that, you know, comes a lot of intentionality, not only in practice, but also, you know, outside of practice um, and games, all the things. And so it's definitely been a process. And, you know, I think every day um, we have a sports psychologist that we work with, Dr. Norwood, one of our professors. Apple is on. Yep, yep. And so I feel like I'm constantly reaching out to him just, you know, we're working together and brainstorming because, you know, something too with us being a fall sport is like we don't have a lot of time, mm-hmm. right? We got to be ready to go right away. Like I always joke, people are like, oh, yeah, we get – you know, winter sports or spring sports, we get a whole season or we get eight weeks to prep. And I'm like, yeah, we get 10 days. We get 10 days to get ready to put a product on the court. Right. And that's all fall sports. And so, you know, in those 10 days, you've got to be able to get your system together. You've got to be able to figure out where is everybody fitting at within that system. You've got to be able to, to build, um, trust all of those things in such a short amount of time. And so with that does come growing pains and, you know, as a coaching staff and I, I know that, and, um, I expected that I didn't expect this rebuild to be easy by any means. Sure. Right. And so, <clears throat> so yeah, so it's definitely been tough. Um, but you know, it's really cool. I think our girls, you know, we talked on, um, Saturday about, you know, your greatest victory or your greatest struggle will always be your greatest victory. Right. And so, we're struggling right now, but we understand that what's what's to come will be far greater than what we're going through right now, right? And so we just keep grinding. We're going to show up today to practice, and we're going to keep keep getting after it. We're going to keep getting better, um, and ultimately keep uh, battling to 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 get to our goal. So, yeah. Inspiring words. That's awesome. Right. We've got one of our assistant basketball coaches helping us put this together, Darian Miner. So, in basketball terms. Trust the process. Yep, absolutely. The process is just beginning, and the next stage in that process is Tuesday night, Avila on the road against Peru State, 7 p.m. start. Correct me if I'm wrong. 6 p.m. 6 p.m. I had it wrong. So JV six... at 4 and Varsity at 6. Perfect. There we go. So some... she knows our schedule better than me. JV I would at... hope so. Well, yeah. <laughs> JV at 4, Varsity at 6, Tuesday night against Peru State. You can find details on how to watch and follow along on our website, avilaathletics.com. Coach Mo, thanks for being here. Thanks, Tim. We'll be right back on Eye on the Eagles.
Welcome back to Eye on the Eagles. Tim Hackett now joined by head men's soccer coach Robert Kelly. Robert, thanks for being here. Thanks for having me. You guys had a, a bit of a unique setup to this season. We talked about this last week on the show, but you guys played last Monday nights, and now you've had we're here the next Monday, and haven't had you haven't had the chance to play since. You've had a lot of time off from the last non-conference game as you get ready for KCAC action coming up this week with your first two in-conference matches. So what is that quote-unquote time off? Because I know it's not really been time off for you personally, but time off for the team. What has that p- period of time over the last week plus been like? Uh, you know, it's just been uh, us working on things that we've struggled with, of course, against Benedictine. You know, they were a really, really good team. We were disorganized, so we, we got time to regroup and also allow injuries to – kind of heal themselves given the given the 10 days that we had between games and uh really just work on ourselves to make sure that we're good to go for the start of conference play was that by design i guess to have that period of time off between the last conference game and the i'm sorry the last non-conference game and the first conference game it's like a, a it's a mini bye week essentially yeah um i would say it's part of it um wasn't a 100 percent plan that we would have the 10 day stretch but we did want to give ourselves a little bit of a break before heading into conference play so we could regroup and work on things as needed um so yeah that's that's kind of what it was meant to do okay well you certainly have had that time and now you have the opportunity to lock back in because conference play starts in earnest this wednesday you've got two home games we've only had one of those so far for you so two more opportunities to play here in kansas city against two teams that to this point in the year have struggled in their own non-conference game. Well, one team has struggled, one team has the results, one team does not, but it feels as if both of those records are a little bit misleading. So first things first, Evangel comes to town here on Wednesday afternoon, obviously the newest member of the KCAC, and this was kind of the preseason storyline with them, but they did not win a conference game last year in the heart coming in to join the KCAC. Uh, what do you know about them to this point, and what do you think we can expect from them here in 2023? I mean, I've seen their score line so far. They've been able to score a lot of goals. Sure. So I think they're probably going to be a, a pretty solid team, especially on the attacking end. They haven't really given up goals either. Uh-huh. So I think they're going to be solid altogether. Um, I think it's going to be more of how do they adjust to our conference play. Um, and, you know, I mean, when they came in, we had we did our preseason coaches bowl, and they had – Evangel ranked above us um, at the end, so joining in. So they have us down below, but um, I don't know. I think it's going to be a big adjustment, I think, in general. Um, not taking any teams lightly is going to be a big thing because at the end of the day, like our conference schedule this last year, um, everyone beat everybody, sure. you know, except for the, you know, the top three, four teams. Like everyone else had three or four wins except for the bottom two. Uh, so I think it's just going to be a uh, – matter of one how do they adjust and then two can we stay on top of things i think you're i mean it's something you and i talked about preseason, like at the men's soccer media day but last year across the board as you said the conference was wide open i mean obviously oklahoma wesleyan is the cream of the crop everybody knows that by now but even they and i mean their head coach even kind of acknowledged this on on media day it's it's no longer just a walk in the park for them on the men's side like it kind of is for them on the women's side but more on that later but uh they struggled to win games all the time last year, and there were teams that post victories against them that then lost to random other teams. So it it feels as if in men's soccer nowadays, and hopefully I guess that continues this year, but it feels as if the conference is wide open, which is why I feel as if this Wednesday, from a you know an outsider perspective, is such an intriguing game because it is the two teams that were picked at the bottom of the conference facing off in game one but it's an opportunity for both of those teams to kind of set the tone for what this season will bring yeah uh for sure i think uh it's just going to be a a battle i think in the end um on seeing how things go um like like i said people have been beating teams all over this past year and i think it'll continue to be the same this year unless some teams find some more consistency and stuff like that well mcpherson i'm sorry evangel is off to a good start Record-wise, they are 4-0. and They haven't conceded a goal, like you said. Most of their games have been blowouts. There is one forfeit win in there. But honestly, the the level of competition, and I don't know everything, obviously. I don't know the, all the stats, uh, ins and out. But just looking at just the, the competition, they haven't necessarily played a ton of high-level teams. So it, it's kind of interesting to see that 4-0 score, 4-0 record, zero goals conceded in four games. But 
it, it feels a, a touch misleading. I feel as if this will be their first game against an NAI school, yes, but then also against a, I would say, a team that is about on the same about on the same level, I guess, based on you know conference records last year. I, I imagine this will be a really intriguing game for the conference writ large, and it's what happens first game out of the out of the shoot. It's kind of interesting how it works out that way. Yeah, I, I, I agree. I think it'll be kind of a tone setter for us if we can come in and make sure that we uh, get a win out of it, um, and it'll set a tone for us the rest of the conference play. Well, there's not a big turnaround because then you do turn around and face McPherson, same place on uh, at the Z on Sunday, a unique Sunday matchup against the Bulldogs, and kind of unlike Evangel, they're kind of on the other side of things right now. They are 0-5, and most of their results do not look good. I was just looking up the stats. They've scored three goals in those five games and given up, I believe, 26 so this is a team that has been right in the middle of the pack pretty much every year that you and I have been here in the KCAC. And, again, I don't know. I can't tell you everybody that they've played so far, but it's not the teams that Evangel has played. Let's be sure. You know, that, that is sure to be sure, but still not amazing competition necessarily. And just kind of surprising for me to see just kind of those results for McPherson going into what is the first week of conference play for them as well. Yeah, it kind of caught me off guard too. But, I mean, with a new coach coming in, I know he's been there a long time. But there's there's things that change, you know, personnel, coaching styles, all that. So a lot of that, I think, factors in. But, you know, they're, they're a team that's finished top four, top five in the conference for the past three or four years. So it's a team that we can't take lightly going into this. Absolutely. And kind of the big picture storyline, this is a little bit, you know, it feels like kind of a, a backhanded compliment, I guess. But there is the chance. Now, you guys have seven home games this year, so there are many chances. But I feel as if this week provides a really good chance to – make some history because like you said you can't take any team lightly and as we just talked about feels as if almost any team can contend with almost any team in, in your sport these days but uh, Avila has not won a home conference game since its first year in the KCAC and on the on, on paper at least to me you have a chance to potentially do that here in two different occasions so is that do you think that could be a motivating factor for this team or is that something that uh, you as coaches aren't really going to be paying attention to. We haven't really paid attention to it much. Um, I, I think it's something a little bit on the negative side, but, I mean, it's something important that we have to actually look at too, right? Um, we're, we're not winning games at home, and it's a place that we have to be able to defend and play well at. Well, you guys were able to snap that kind of streak by defeating Kansas Wesleyan on the road last year. That was uh, an awesome game, first of all, but a, kind of a, a tone setter in that regard. But there are two opportunities to – kind of rewrite some history and set the tone here as 2023 begins. 14 teams in the conference now, only eight make the conference tournament, right? Yep. So nothing has changed with the new addition to the conference and two opportunities for the Eagles to get off on the right foot as conference play begins. Evangel comes to town on Wednesday afternoon, 4.30 kickoff, and then McPherson comes to the Z on Sunday afternoon, 3.30 kickoff. You can watch all of those games live and for free on the Avila Sports Network. Coach Kelly, thanks for being here. Thanks for having me. We'll be right back on Eye on the Eagles.
Welcome back to Eye on the Eagles. We're live at Tanner's at Redbridge on a dreary September the 11th. Tim Hackett now joined by head women's soccer coach Katie LaForge. Thanks for being here, Coach. Thanks for having me, Tim. You guys had a little bit of time off. I talked about this with Robert just now as well, but kind of a unique setup to this season, full week off between mm-hmm. the end of non-conference play and the start of conference play. Full seven days between when you last played on Wednesday and when you're going to play next this coming Wednesday. What has that been like for you and for the team? Is it Was that planned, first of all, or was it just kind of a happy accident, I guess? A bit of both. Um, I think that when we schedule the non-cons, it, you're a little bit more at the mercy of – you know, who you're trying, Everybody. especially when you do the, the home and away, you know, return the favor of the year late, the next season. So we were on the road for four of the five matches. Sure. So, um, yeah, we were a little bit at their mercy, but I was cognizant of the fact that we, you know, once conference starts, it's pretty rigorous. So mentally a break, physically a little bit of a break. Um, but if anything, it, it allowed us time to actually work on the things that we need to, and um, the spirits are high for the most part. There's still um, some, you know, gusto in the group as far as, you know, making – we haven't gotten the results that we wanted, but we've had very good moments and have played well and had some, um, you know, good team moments, not just individual moments. So – just making sure that um, we keep that at the top of mind as instead of getting all sad about stuff because there's no there's nothing good can come of that so um, it, we use it as a time to really refocus the group keep them looking forward not worrying too much about what's behind us and yeah excited it's a it's kind of like a I know a, as a former player it was itching for game day right so that's that was another reason one to physically have a bit of a break especially if we're banged up bruised and stuff like that and then also to get that amped up feeling um especially with a new opponent in in our conference coming to us on wednesday let's talk about that first of all because you do have two conference games on tap this week both of them at home so a little bit of a a, a departure from what it's been like in (laughs) non-conference i guess and you start off with evangel the new member of the kcac and this was a team that was solid in the heart the mm-hmm. last couple of years, and they're off to kind of a, a strange start. They're one three and one so far this year. They've got a lopsided win, one lopsided loss, one or two ranked teams on the schedule. So, just based on results, it, it feels kind of difficult to for me to suss anything out about the Valor. Their last game was against an NCAA squad, so mm-hmm. only two nothing loss there. So, uh, feels like a an, an, an interesting team, I guess, mm-hmm. to use my my vague word, but an opportunity to, to use your word, reset, and mm-hmm. jump right into conference play against what figures to be a pretty solid team. Yeah, and I've known Coach Bruce for a long time, so he is very much a proponent of women's soccer. Mm-hmm. So I've had a lot of interactions with him, so I know that he brings the right mentality for a good culture, mm-hmm. and that usually translates on the field as a solid team. Um, obviously each school has their own, you know, challenges as far as getting players to there. And, but I do feel like, you know, so we played them my very first year. So in 20, um, eight, 18, yeah, 2018. Um, and you know, they were, they were a, like I said, a pretty solid team. They had a couple standouts, but nobody, they just, they just all have a very, very clear um, goal as a team, and um, you can tell that the way that they play, they're all on the same page. So he's been there a long time, so he knows probably the kind of players that he likes and wants, and he continues to get those. So especially coming out of the heart of America, you know, there's a lot of great teams in that in that uh, conference. So they know how to battle, I'm sure, of it. So And Bruce is a, a like I said, can bring – a good culture, my culture and mindset to the group. So I, I do feel like even if there is a lack of quote unquote talent or, you know, individual standouts, I think it's still going to be a battle. Um, it has been, it was a battle in 2018. Um, and I think it'll just continue to probably keep that trend going. Sure. Mm. And something I just talked about with Robert as well, and, mm. you know, same sport, same schedule, but obviously different teams. Mm-hmm. So that's why I think it's applicable to ask you as well. This is an opportunity for you guys to set the tone here mm-hmm. in the conference season because we've seen this, I mean, to be totally honest, 
and be, to be totally frank, we've, we've seen this from your squad for the last couple of years. Sometimes the non-con results aren't there, but once you get into conference play, it's, you know, for whatever reason. Yeah, uh, whatever reason. <laughs> uh, the, game, the games are closer and the results yeah. are often there. And something that I want to bring up based on something you said earlier is that you, you said the team has the, the right mindset going into mm-hmm. this year. And I think that's, that's great to hear because I remembered a couple of seasons ago when, you know, the non-conference was tough. The results weren't there necessarily. And I was hearing from the players, you know, that they were just ready to win. Mm-hmm. And, but not just, not in the sense that they were like itching to get back out there and ready to go. They were just tired of losing yeah. rather than what ready to do whatever it took to win, mm-hmm. I guess. So now both of those are fair, mm-hmm. but I think it's an, I think it's an important distinction, I guess, that you can be tired of losing. And I yeah. certainly can understand that, yeah. but also you have to be ready to win and prepare to do whatever yeah. it takes rather than just wanting it to happen. Correct. It's my mom used to tell me, eh, it's good to want, but hmm. you know, what does that look like? What does that? So I think us having the, and I, I am not, I'm a believer in that we, if we want to be the best, we have to measure ourselves against the best. And no matter what kind of team I've got, I want to continue to do that. So, cause ultimately that is the goal is to be, is to be the best. Um, so we've got such great competition in Kansas city and the very, you know, outskirts, you know, just like 45 minutes or so in each, you know, pretty much every direction. Sure. And so testing us, putting us in pressure situations, reveal to me and our coaching staff in general what it is that we are deficient in so that we can be conscious of it and then make actual strides to an actual, you know, not just wanting, you know, but actual actions to thwart those things so that they don't come and bite us later when it, when, you know, the game's super duper count (laughs) for conference. So um, that's where I think that, the, I mean, we do get one less this year because, or one less non-con because of the additional team this year. So, um, you know, but in for the most part, I think that the girls maybe take on a different persona when the conference comes in, uh, conference play comes in. So, hopefully, hopefully that's still their their mindset and they're ready to do the things that is necessary to win, which will help them stop being <laughs> tired of losing. Yeah, so well, get a second opportunity to win here mm-hmm. coming up this week. Not necessarily a unique setup. It's pretty much two games a week from here on in, but <clears throat> two home games back to back, which games, is yeah. kind, which is kind of unique. McPherson comes to town coming up on Sunday, and that has been a team that has been. I mean, it feels like every single year you and I have been together, it has been uh, the games have been super close, yeah. like two to one finishes, things like that, one direction or another. And we yeah, we tend to underestimate McPherson again. Another team that like their coach has been there a long time. Sure. He knows the kind of players that he likes and wants, and they have a very clear. Um, goal and and culture and mindset and so they come into games ready to throw down like uh and i mean that in the the most kosher way (laughs) um just when it comes to battling they know how to they know how to do you know to to do it and so sometimes i think we take them um a little lighthearted. but this is the first time we played them so early we usually play them like middle slash closer to the end of season so um they've changed up our order which is kind of nice um but it could be so that might be interesting so we'll see how that kind of um affects us as far as you know our continuity now versus what it's going to look like in a month i think it's a great point i mean it's kind of an underrated part of it that things Mm -hmm. do change as the course of the year goes on. injuries 100 percent yeah so they scored a ton of goals in one game. They have struggled to score goals in other games. They've given up a ton of goals so mm-hmm. far this to this point in the year. They have one or two strong players from the last couple of years that are back. But feels like I mean to be honest, I mean I mean no disrespect, but based on the record, this feels like a, a McPherson team that you might you know overlook. Like you were just saying, you might sure. be it might be easy to do that based on some of the stats and the record. Right. But based on what we have seen, that is not something that any team can do much less us right right well in the rankings that came out you know again i know it's a it's within the conference so it's only a you know 13 14 coaches opinions but they've been around they've seen a lot and you know based on that we should win both of these games um if you're just going to look at it straight from there and obviously my my players know me that i want to win everything and i think they want to win as well so i think that this is a good start that we could really get things moving in the right direction Absolutely. for us. So, uh, But, again, uh, no teams ever make it easier for us. Opportunity to reset and yep. potentially get on the right foot 
as conference play gets kicked off this week at the Z. Evangel comes to town, first conference matchup between the Eagles and the Valor, Wednesday at 2 p.m., and then McPherson on Sunday at 1 p.m. You can watch all of those games live and for free on the Avila Sports Network. Coach LaForge, thanks for being here. Thanks, Tim. You're watching Eye on the Eagles. We'll be right back with our next coach. Welcome back to Eye on the Eagles. We're live from Tanners at Red Ridge, just off of the Avila campus in South KC. Tim Hackett now joined for the first time this year by head dance coach and assistant athletic director Cindy Freeman. Welcome to the coach. Welcome to the show, coach. Welcome to the coach, the coach's show. See, it, we've done about 10 of these intros already. I was bound to screw one of them up. Sorry it was yours. Welcome to the show, coach. Thank you for having me. We'll start from there on the retake. How about that? Well, if you cut it, if you cut this clip, you'll start from there. Coach Freeman, welcome to the show. Um, there's always a lot going on with dance and cheer, more, I feel, than most people realize uh, mm -hmm. because it's not a, a team that competes multiple times per week mm -hmm. during the year. But uh, before we get into that, I mean, we'd be remiss if we don't talk about the success that your program has had over the last couple of years. I'm still trying to think about the best way to introduce you guys. I have to go back and dip into some boxing clips or something because mm -hmm. you guys are – the two-time reigning and defending DTU national champions picked up two more national championships this past April in Florida. Congratulations, first of all, on the continued success. And I guess just flash back to that for us, because this is your first time talking about it with us on this show. What was that, not just that moment, but that week like, and seeing all of that work that you guys did finally come to fruition once again? It was awesome. I, you, we weren't in first place in one of the divisions after semis. And so kind of 
sparked a little fire, I think, in the team, even more so than it, they would normally have going into finals. And they just danced like they were on fire in finals. And the hard thing about dance and cheer is you don't really have complete control of, out of yeah. the over the outcome. You, It's going to be someone else's opinion of what they think you look like. So you do the best you can. And you just hope that it's received well. And it was. We were really blessed. Yeah, I'd say. <laughs> uh, that's something I, I think I've asked you this before, but it's just such an interesting, that is such an interesting part of your sport compared to anything else, if you will. Uh, is that, what kind of mentality does that have on you as a coach and as a team? Because it is out of your hands at the end of the day or out of mm-hmm. your feet, as the case may be. Uh, is that restricting or is that more freeing or does it not even matter because it's just kind of the reality? Well, for me, I do a lot of research on as far as what is popular in dance at the time. And you try to, you have to be strategic in what you do. You have to be strategic in the music you pick, in the costuming you pick, in the way that you put your dance together, the staging, how things move on the floor. And it's, it's one of those things that as a coach, I have to constantly evolve and stay on top of what the trends are in dance to make sure that I'm putting the best product I can on the floor and be competitive. So there really is some research, to use your word, that has to go into it every time. Mm You're going to figure out, you have to figure out what might sell well, what might score well, because that changes year to year? It can, yes, definitely. And the level of athleticism changes every year, too. So you're constantly also working with your team and trying new skills, whether it's tumbling or lifts or just harder dance skills in general. And we, we just have to constantly be on top of our game to stay competitive. And kind of, I think, proof positive of how much any team evolves over the years or even from one year to the next. You have almost rebuilt your team from last year's national mm-hmm. championship. And, of course, flashing back to the previous year's championship team, it's a, it is a new-looking crew this fall compared to either of those last two school or last two squads that have had so much success you've got yourself a very young team this year which is kind of different for you mm-hmm. than it has looked in the last couple of years but it's a team that I know you are really really excited about we do we don't have any seniors this year um, but we, we have a large junior class a small sophomore class and a large freshman class so overall it is a younger team but we do have a lot of experience in our junior class we're very excited and um The talent level is through the roof right now, and and I don't think anything, there's anything we can't throw at them to try right now. So that that, that speaks volumes, I think, because it is no seniors. It stands stands out to me, but with so many freshmen, you've had the ability to throw anything at them, and they're already Mm -hmm. capable enough, not just capable enough, but good enough to be able to take all of those instructions, take all of that coaching, and Mm -hmm. adapt it into something that is manageable. So this team is, this group is already that kind of far ahead i guess that they're able to do all of that yeah we're we're doing more difficult things on our game day performances mm-hmm. this year because we want the team members to be used to i don't want to say the pressure but sometimes doing a difficult trick or skill is more pressure than just dancing on sure. its own so we're trying to do some of those things at the games just so that they're more mentally used to the the pressure of of landing a trick or a tumbling trick or a lift or whatever so we're trying to do more difficulty at our games just to prepare the team for nationals this year we'll talk a little bit more about games here in a second but first it's it's a constant process being a college coach and i'm obviously not one myself but i i understand how it goes that you've got this team built for this year Mm -hmm. and i know as i said it's a team that you are really excited because you know so much about just about everybody on the team at this point but it is a ever-evolving process because you're already starting to put feelers out and get the team built for next year and Mm -hmm. years to come after that and we're only in september Mm -hmm. yeah i'm excited we're already recruiting i don't have any seniors graduating but we still do have quite a few spots Mm -hmm. available and and we don't have a limit on how many people Mm -hmm. we'll take so we're we're starting to recruit and watch video and have people come in and visit because we don't do a regular tryout in the spring. We like to sign our athletes earlier on like the other sports do. So if anybody's out there that's interested, reach out to me, and we're ready to start signing people right now. That's exciting. And what's all, what also is exciting is it's great, obviously, and we'll talk about this with uh, Coach Julia Cram here next too, but it's great just seeing you guys out there at game days. I only get to see you guys so much from where I physically am on football, but especially once we get into basketball season, because we know how much work that you guys put in. You guys have practices 
multiple times a week. Some, you know, in the in the in the preseason, you have two a days, just like quote unquote any other team does. Mm-hmm. And I feel as if that is kind of an underrated part of dance and cheer. Mm-hmm. And you guys work hard as coaches. The athletes work very hard to get into performance shape and to go out there and excel because that is what we've come to expect from you guys, frankly, and it's what you've come to expect from them as well. Mm-hmm. So it is just exciting for us as people who aren't part of the team to get out there and see you guys get out there and do something that you love for the first time, which we got to see last weekend and coming up now here this weekend. We've got six home football games Mm -hmm. this year, which is Mm -hmm. also kind of unique. So what is game week like for you, and what is it like once we actually get out there on on Saturday, hopefully in the afternoon now instead of the mornings? Well, hopefully, because we are normally home, it's – feels like not always every other week but this week has been it will be that way we learned the season is yeah yeah so we learned a new routine on friday and we're going to be cleaning it which means basically getting everybody synced together so that they look and they match each other when they're dancing and then we just run all of our other game day material all the time so then we'll just keep running um, all of our timeouts our quarter transition routines the dance we're doing we run it as a whole team we run it in small groups to critique and give people feedback and we do we do about 40 minutes of stretch and warm up at the beginning of practice just to keep everybody loose because they're also lifting you know and getting getting back into lifting is getting people sore and tight so we try to do that so our practices are three hours three days a week and they work really hard and then they lift on top of sure that, so what's something that i you know something that i feel i understand from having sort of been part of your world in the past but not everybody Certainly not to your level, obviously. I don't mean to suggest that. But what I feel is if people don't understand is that, you know, we will see some of the same routines as in the past. Like you talked about the quarter transitions. Mm -hmm. It's the same track. It's more or less the same routine from year to year. Mm -hmm. But it's not the same team performing that routine. So you do have Mm -hmm. to continue to teach it, first of all, Mm -hmm. workshop it, critique Mm -hmm. it, and get it looking as good as you would want. So it's it's the same dance for all intents and purposes, but a different team that's putting that dance together, which means it's a different process. You know, and it's the the routines we do between quarters are traditions at the university. Mm -hmm. So those are things that we recycle every year. Fight song, obviously, we do. Hey Song, which is Rock and Roll Part 2, Zombie Nation. And then we also usually have about five to six timeout sidelines that are new each year that we do during the quarter time and the girls typically choreograph those because they like to choreograph and so we learn those we clean those and then yes we teach the new girls the material that we use year to year so who determines who gets to we'll talk more about this i guess as we go along this summer or this fall but who who determines who gets to choreograph those those tracks because it is cool to see that the girls have a direct impact on what you guys do as performers i do it by seniority so basically you know the upperclassmen can do those timeouts first and then once i've seen what they can do on a timeout sometimes they want to choreograph a halftime dance as well but i like to see their choreography on a timeout first before we do that because a lot of the girls are very talented choreographers too and that's a creative outlet for them that they want to continue to have so it's an opportunity to kind of mm-hmm put something in practice as well because you're creating it yourself and then mm-hmm. having the opportunity to do something that you've created kind of a unique setup for a team not, not that right. it's bad but mm-hmm. not many you know basketball coaches as Gary and Minor looks on are going to have their players draw up a play they're going to get into a game right. necessarily maybe that could happen I don't know but <laughs> these they literally have the opportunity to not only dictate but completely have creative control over mm-hmm. what you guys do and then they get to perform their own work I think that's really cool you know, one of our captains, and she's a junior, Olivia, she choreographed the routine we're doing this week. It's a hip-hop routine, and she did an awesome job at it. It's really, really good. And so we're really excited to put it on the field this weekend. Awesome. Well, you will have that opportunity, and you will have the opportunity to see the Glitter Girls out there at halftime and, of course, during all the timeouts and between quarters and all of that stuff for the second time, second of six times this football season, of course, as we get ready for basketball season coming up as well. That's this Saturday, 1 p.m., during the football game against Bethel. Coach Freeman, thank you for being here. Thank you for having me. You're watching Eye on the Eagles. We'll be right back with our final coach.
Welcome back to Eye on the Eagles. We're live from Tanners at Redbridge, just off of the Avila University campus. SID Tim Hackett now joined for the first time by head cheer coach Julia Cram. Welcome to the show, Julia. Thanks for having me. And welcome to our team as well. It's our first time getting the chance to talk to you directly on this show. So first of all, I wanted to welcome you officially to our team. It's been great to have you aboard and to help see kind of the renaissance of Avila cheer and have the team back out there on the sideline uh, two weeks ago against Southwestern and obviously coming back up this weekend against Bethel and the rest of the year. We'll talk more about that as, as we go along, but it was, it was just awesome to see the ladies back out there with dance and in the, with the crowd and all of that. But before we get into that, I want to have the opportunity to talk a little bit about yourself. So Missouri native, former Missouri cheerleader, and now joining us after a couple of years at a different school in the KCAC, we are really excited to have you as part of our team. What has the transition period, I guess, been like as you joined us a couple of months ago, getting ready for your first season, the first fall, I guess, as our head cheer coach? What have the last few months been like for you? Well, when I got here in March, the main focus was really just recruiting, trying to get a team together. Um, we didn't have very many, many returners coming back. A lot of upperclassmen had left, so we were left with a very small team. So first order of business was just getting a team together, together, getting some new kids in, getting, you know, some talent so that we could, you know, progress the way we wanted to this season. So um, we're a very young team. Um, we have, I think, eight or nine new faces joining us, um, along with our six returners coming in. So super excited about that um we had some open gyms in the spring just to kind of you know i could get to meet the team kind of get to work with them kind of see where their skill level is at so we kind of can set us up knowing what we need to kind of work on once we get back in the fall so a lot of it was just you know getting comfortable with the girls getting a team together that was kind of the spring um and then this fall it's really just trying to kind of reset that foundation um last year um didn't really the season didn't go the way that they had planned so um kind of just working on rebuilding um, with me as a coach, kind of what I want, what our expectations are, kind of relaying that foundation of where their skills are at and kind of what direction we want this program to go, kind of the changes we want to make. What do you want? What are your expectations for year one and then going forward? Um, really just the main goal is getting them back on the competition floor. Um, they took a break from competing this past year, so pretty much all of my girls are new to competition, save for one or two of them. So just enjoying that process, getting that experience. Um, we are planning to go to NCAA Nationals for the first time um, in Daytona, Florida. So we're really excited about that. That is a super fun experience. That's where I competed as a college athlete. So just having them experience that environment, have fun. Um, and then just kind of, you know, get back in game day, kind of reboost that a little bit. Um, but then we're planning to return to NAI competition next year as well. So prepping. Um, to make sure that when we do come back to that, we are competitive in our conference as our conference teams um, in NAI cheer have really grown the talent level. So making sure when we make that return um, that we're at the same level with everybody else. That's really exciting because it's not like you hinted at. It's not something that this program, this team has been able to experience over the last couple yes. of years for various reasons. But that is that is exciting, I'm sure, for them. And it is, I'll just speak for all of us, that is exciting to have that as part of not just the future plans, but the uh, the imminent future plans as well, just to have have the opportunity to compete at a high level national competition at, at, like NCA, which you have plenty of experience with, like you just mentioned. That has to be an exciting opportunity for the team, knowing that that is on the horizon. It's just another thing to look forward to, another thing to yes. strive towards. Yes, yeah. So we're excited. They're excited to compete. These girls, just um, especially our returners that were hoping to compete last year and then got told that they didn't. So they're really hungry to get out there and experience it. Daytona is really fun. We compete outside on a band shell right next to the beach. So that environment is a little bit different. Um, most of your competitions are indoors. Yeah. So kind of having that aspect, um, it creates some challenges and kind of things you have to work for and plan ahead. Um, just getting used to being outside, but. Um, it's super exciting. The environment is fun. It's a great experience of around, whether you're competing, not competing, just being around that many cheerleaders, and everybody loves it there. It's such a great experience. So they're excited for that. They're looking forward to it. Um, it kind of makes our season a little bit longer. We compete in April instead of January when they normally would compete, so kind of helps to spread things out a little bit, and we're not so rushed. Um, gives them some time over break to kind of go home, but it uh, makes our season longer, but also gives us more time to prep and prepare. Sure. 
This is kind of a rookie question, but you've mentioned that you know part of the, I don't want to say the struggle, but part of the early mission for yourself was to build a team because it was a small number of, of athletes coming back. What is kind of the bare minimum number of athletes that you feel would consist or would subsist for a competing cheer team, either for game day or for nationals? Because I know for basketball, for example, the bare minimum that you have to have is five. You obviously would love to have three times that at the bare minimum, but you need to have five to be able to take the floor. What is the bare minimum that you feel that you need for the different levels of, of competition and performance that you guys have and then what would be ideal for what you would want to achieve ideally to compete we can compete with 20 so that's typically the goal to get at least 20 but about 10 to 12 is kind of what you need to be successful to be able to do everything you need to some of our pyramids require us you know a certain number of people for legality reasons so about 10 i'd like to have 12 um, athletes on the floor so we're sitting pretty good at that we have about 15 right now so i feel pretty good about you know having the right numbers you know get to pick and choose a little bit with that there yeah for sure it seems like mission accomplished then in that regard yes. like you have done yes. what you have needed to get that hit that threshold and even that is i, I think that's an achievement in and of itself because it, yes. <laughs> there just were so many new people that you needed to make that happen yes definitely with the number we started out a number of returners i was getting a little nervous um um but now I feel pretty good about, you know, the talent we have and the number we have um, that I feel comfortable that, say, you know, saves for some injuries, things happen. Um, we're covered there. I feel pretty good. I know one of the big pieces of fall preseason, if you will, is the fall college camp that the team has gone to. And this year you go to Northwest Missouri State to compete at the NC and to learn to practice and compete at the NCA college camp at Northwest Missouri State which is a prerequisite for Nationals competition, you were telling me. So what was that experience like, and what are what are you looking to see and to achieve from that experience, and what did you see and achieve this year in year one for you? So the main goal of camp is always just to earn your bid to Nationals. Um, pretty much all you have to do for that is just participate in camp, but we compete against all the other teams there for levels of bids, so they give out special bids. Those are called your gold bids at camp. Um, those you get special priority in hotels, mm. registration. Um, those are kind of your top bids that your top teams earn. Um, and then you obviously have silver bids, which is kind of that second level tier bids, and then bronze bids. So we did earn a bronze bid, which is awesome. But um, at camp, you're competing for those gold bids against several, all of the teams there. So several D1 schools. So we had KU was there, Mizzou was there, Iowa State. So we're competing It's all of those teams there, but it's kind of nice just to be at camp to kind of get exposure to those other schools, see what those other programs are doing. Um, it's good for the girls to kind of, you know, interact with those kids, kind of see it pushes them to want to be better and do better. And if they see other teams doing things, they're like, I want to do that too. So um, that's kind of just good for them at camp, gets them working with other people. Um, obviously, we go to camp, we learn skills it's like we get to work with the staff which are high level collegiate cheerleaders or former cheerleaders coaches um alike so just having different people besides myself um teach them things they can learn things different pyramid stunts um that's always great for us it kind of sets us up um we you know do a couple practices in the summer and kind of get the basics down but it's kind of our first time working those higher level skills so having extra people with extra tips and extra help is always great for us as well so kind of sets us up for competition and then we do some sideline stuff as well i can which is obviously a big piece of what you guys do on game days and we are in game week number yes. two here this yes. fall six home football games this year which is very unique for us here at avila and then obviously getting ready to jump into basketball season in about a month and a half or so what is game week like for you and then how has well just one down obviously but what was your first game day at avila like as you get ready for game day number two we had a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun. The environment was great. The girls really enjoyed kind of getting in front of a crowd for the first time. So um, we do our skills in practice, but it's kind of the first time that they get to do it, kind of test them and see how they do with nerves. Um, because obviously, you know, doing skills and stuff at practice is different than sure. um, in front of everybody. So um, it's a lot of fun. Um, a lot of these girls, you know, either have been for smaller schools or have never cheered to all together. I'm um, so it was great just seeing kind of how they did, how they kind of that first level of performance. It kind of helps me as a coach kind of see who might do well in front of a competition crowd, just seeing how, you know, they light up, how they perform, how they do under stress or pressure or when there's just first time seeing them outside as well since we compete outside. So seeing how they do kind of when it's hot or when it's, you know, we it was very hot for the game okay. on Saturday. So um, 
but it was good. Um, we've been working really hard of just trying to make changes of things they've done in the past and kind of um, was a good thing for me to kind of see, you know, okay, what are kind of some things we want to do to kind of elevate the overall game day experience. Um, with the crowd being up on the hill, it's a little bit unique. It's not something I'm necessarily used to. Um, so just kind of trying to see how we can make the fan experience um, the best we can. But um, we had a lot of fun. It was great. The girls really enjoyed it. Um, lots of thing, new things we kind of want to try for this weekend, kind of just seeing what we can do to kind of spice things up a bit. But we're excited. And there are things that you can directly take away from what you see on game day when you're doing sidelines that will inform what you do when you practice and prepare for nationals? Like there are some specific tangible things that you are looking for? Yes. So really we do a lot of pyramids on game days, um, which just kind of trying to see, you know, okay, what girls do well in what places, what kind of if the nerve gets to some girls, if they just really, you know, can't work well in front of a crowd. And that kind of helps me, you know, okay, maybe we need to try something else, mm -hmm. try something different. Um, but also just kind of seeing, you know, what the girls look like in front of a crowd that's the big that's the biggest thing for us um because you know some people are practice performers and some people you know they light up and you see kind of they just show up a little bit different on the sidelines they're prime time performers right yes, ready, yes, ready to yes. compete yes. when it matters most <laughs> yes well we'll have the uh, another opportunity to see the avala cheer team on the sidelines this coming saturday at our second home football game one o'clock avala against bethel with cheer and dance back on the sidelines coach cram thank you for being with us Thanks for having me. And welcome to our team. That's going to do it for our edition of Eye on the Eagles here this afternoon. September the 11th, thank you to Tanners at Redbridge for hosting us. For all of us here at Avala Athletics, including executive producer Darian Miner, I've been Tim Hackett. We'll see you next time on Eye on the Eagles. Until then, so long from Kansas City.